This is chapter seven, lesson one on page 473. And it's the graphs of the sine, cosine, and the tangent functions. And so I want to tie this very closely with, I want to connect the graph with the unit circle. Because really the graph is just the unit circle on a curve as opposed to a circle. All right, so let's review of what the unit circle looks like. All right. Um, X value is related to which one? Sine or cosine? X is related to cosine. All right, so it's always cosine, sine. Right, and that's our X and our Y values. Okay, remember going all the way around the unit circle, we begin in terms of uh, radians. We begin at zero, and this is what? Do you remember? It's what? In radians, pi over two, and this is pi, and this is three pi over two, all the way back to to pi, <clears throat> all right? So one whole cycle for the sine and the cosine, not the tangent, one whole cycle for the sine and the cosine is zero to two pi, all right? Now, remember there are three angles within here, within that one, within each quadrant, really, there are three angles. Does anybody remember what the first one is? In, in radians, pi over six. The next one, pi over four. And the last one, yep, pi over three. All right, what is the cosine at zero radians or at two pi radians? One, one, because on the x, Remember, it's called the unit circle because it goes out one unit. And so on the X axis, it's one. On the Y axis, it's zero. zero. All right. And with the cosine, we start at one and count down. So what's this next one? We start at one and count down. Three, two, one, zero, right? But they're all over two. And the two and the three are under a radical. Okay, you remember that? All right, so it's one, three, two, one, zero. Cosine counts down. So then the sine counts up. So now it's zero, one, two, three, to one. Same thing, everything's over two, the three and the two are under a radical. And this repeats, but the only difference is the sine changes right? All right, so it's all, we have three over here. Let's see if we can figure out what is the radians for this first angle above pi? What are the radians for this first angle? What is the distance here? In radians, <laughs> pi over six, right? So we go all the way to pi. We're going to take away a sixth of pi. How many are we left with? Five. Five pi over six. All right, what's the distance of this next ray from pi? Five. 
it's a fourth of a pi. So we take pi and subtract one fourth and we're left with three pi over four, four. And this last one is a third of a pi from pi. So we take a whole pi, subtract a third. How many, how many thirds do we have? Two pi over three. It's all what? Students. Students. Take calculus. Okay, so my ratios are going to be the same as they are in the first quadrant. All right, this is going to be square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. The only difference is what? What is true with these? There's something missing. Cosine is going to be negative. Cosine is the first one. And we can go on. Because in, in this quadrant, only the tangent would be positive. So your sine and cosine are going to be negative. In this quadrant, only the cosine is positive. So your sine and your tangent will be negative. Okay? Now... Let's take that information and apply it graphically. All right, your radians, your radians are going to be on your x-axis. Radians on the x-axis. Your ratio is going to be on the y-axis. All right, so we're just taking this information and we're going to lay it out on, the, on a graph. All right, so we always have key points. Our key points are 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. All right, so what is the cosine at pi? Negative one. What is the sign? Zero. Zero. What is the cosine at three pi over two? Zero. And what is the sign? Negative one. All right, so we're going to talk about the sine curve first. So the sine curve goes from zero at zero radians to one at pi over 2, back to 0 at pi, and a negative 1 at 3 halves pi, and it goes back to 0 at 2 pi. So these four key points in terms of radians, we're going we're gonna to label the x-axis with. So obviously 0 is the, is the origin. Then we go to pi, half a pi. Then we go to pi. Then we go to 3 pi over 2 all the way to 2 pi and the and on our y-axis we just go from 0 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 so 0 is labeled it goes up to 1 back to 0 back to negative 1 all right so this is the sine curve that's the first curve or graph that um your book teaches. All right, so we're gonna graph it. At zero radians, the sign is zero. So this is zero, zero. Got it? At pi over two, the sign is one. So our coordinate point would be pi over two, one. Pi over two, one. Then at pi, the sine curve goes back to zero. So pi, zero. Then at three halves pi, we go to negative one. So we go to three halves pi, negative one. 
then back to 2 pi, the sine is 0. And when we graph it, it looks like this. Now the sine curve is cyclical. So I could go back um, negative pi over two pi, negative three pi, that should be a negative, and it would be the same thing. So if I start out at zero and I go negative half pi, where am I? negative one. And then at negative pi, we go back to zero. Then at negative three halves pi, we go back to one. So this is cyclical. It's, it's called cyclical because it repeats this pattern that's in between zero and two pi. Infinitely to the right and infinitely to the left. This pattern repeats. We go from zero to one to zero to negative one. Every half pi. So at four pi, what's gonna be the ratio? I'm gonna be back at zero, right? At six pi, where's the graph gonna be? back at zero. At negative two pi, the graph's gonna be at zero. So that every two pi, the graph will have completed one cycle of going up and back down and back to zero. So that we could say um, that the sign of any the sign of any radians is going to be equal to the sign of that plus or minus 2 pi. I can add 2 pi to any radians and I'm back to the same ratio. Does that make sense? <clears throat> because it takes 2 pi to complete one cycle. This is called a cycle or the period. And, and, and it's going to change. We're going to squeeze it. We're going to stretch it. We're going to transform it. The highest it goes is 1, right? The lowest it goes is negative 1. That's why early on when we looked at the sign of any value, I told you that the sign of any radians or any angle will never be greater than one or less than negative one. You, you get an error in your calculator. All right? So it's cyclical. It repeats the same cycle every two pi unless it's been transformed. Just like we transformed our other graphs and stretched them um, and squeeze them, right, and move them up and move them down, we're, we're going to do the same thing with the sine, cosine, and the tangent curve. All right, so I'm, I, the period. I'm just introducing concepts that we're going to really hone in on later. So the period, or the cycle, see, Paula, cycle, of, of the sine curve is 2 pi. All right, the fact that it goes up to 1 and down to negative 1, that's called the amplitude. The highest, the, the distance from, from the axis here, the distance to the highest point or to the lowest point is called your amplitude. So unless it's been transformed, your amplitude is one. That says the highest point of the curve is one unit above or below your x-axis. Does 
This is called your amplitude. All right. Now, let's look at the cosine. Before we do, let's look at example one on page 477. <clears throat> and then we're gonna look at the cosine function. Okay, it says, <clears throat> state all values for T, T being a particular radian, for which the sine of t is equal to negative one. All right, the sine of t is equal to negative one. So we're looking for what radians, at what radians is the ratio negative one? Okay, so where is the sine negative one? Yes. At three pi over two. At three pi over two. So t, is three pi over two, but but how often is it repeated? Will, will we get back to negative one? But what distance will it take me to get back to negative one? Two pi. two pi. So this is plus and minus two pi. So t can be two pi, three pi over two. You could add two pi, you could add four pi, you could add six pi, you could subtract 2 pi, because the distance when it returns to negative 1 is going to be 2 pi. So there are an infinite number of solutions for t, but we can define it by saying that it's every 3 half pi plus minus 2 pi because of the repeat. Make sense? The cycle repeats every 2 pi. 2 pi away from 3 halves pi, we're going to be back at negative 1. Make sense? All right, now let's look at, let's graph the cosine function. And this is on the top of page 477. All right, using the same unit circle at zero radians, what's the cosine? One. So at zero radians, it's one. At pi over two, where is it? Zero. Notice I'm always using these four key points, right? Pi over two, pi, three halves pi, and two pi to graph it. I'm always using these four key points. At pi, where is the cosine? Negative one. At three halves pi, where's the cosine? Back to zero. And then at two pi, where is the cosine? Back to one. So the cosine curve looks like this. It almost looks like a, huh? Uh, yes, a parabola with the ends curved out, yes. And the same, so the period or the cycle for um, the cosine curve is two pi. And so if I went back negative pi over two, I'd be back at zero. Negative pi, I'd be back at negative one. Negative three halves pi, I'd be back at zero. So it just goes continuous. Now, if you look at the sine and the cosine curve, if you look real closely, they look exactly the same, don't they? It's just, what has happened to the cosine curve? It's been shifted like one unit, one half of a pi away from each other. Like the distance from here to here is 
a half a pi. Right? The distance from here to here is a half a pi. So what has happened really is the, the sine curve, if I shift it to the left a half a pi, it looks exactly like the cosine curve. If I do a horizontal shift left a half a pi, the sine curve is the exactly is exactly the same as the cosine curve. As the sine curve. If I shift the sine curve to the right by a half a pi, it looks just like the cosine curve. So I could shift the sine to the left a half a pi and it looked like the cosine curve. Or I could shift the cosine curve to the right a half a pi and it would look exactly like the sine curve. So now, if we were to ask, what, what is T such that the cosine of T is negative one? So for what values of T does the ratio of the cosine equal negative one? So when's the cosine negative one? At pi, right? So t is pi plus and minus two pi. It's going to repeat every two pi. To the left of that and to the right of that, your ratio will be negative one. So there are an infinite no number of solutions. Let's look at the tangent. Now, how do we calculate the tangent using the sine and the cosine? The tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So, sine over cosine. So, at zero radians, what is the tangent? At zero radians, the tan is... Zero over one, which is zero. At pi over two, what is the tangent? It's sine over cosine, and what is that? One over zero, which is? What, one over zero? Undefined. So at pi over two, it's undefined, which means we have an asymptote. When between here and here, when is the tangent one in this first quadrant? At what? Pi over four, yeah. Just to give me another point, it's about here, maybe. Nope, follow up higher, thank you. So somewhere between, exactly between, right? Zero and two pi, the tangent equals one. Because that's square root of two over two over square root of two over two. And anything over itself is equal to one. So what happens with the tangent, because we have this asymptote, I'm now gonna go negative. Okay, because the curve doesn't, doesn't continue, it stops. So what happens at negative half a pi? What is the tangent at negative pi over two? using your sine over cosine. 
What is it? Undefined, because it'd be negative one over zero, undefined. So look, we go back here and we have another asymptote such that the period for the tangent goes from negative pi over two to pi over two. It's the period for the sine and the cosine are two pi. It takes two complete pi's in terms of radians, that sounded strange, to complete a cycle. Not so for the tangent. The tangent uh, period is just pi. And it looks, going through the origin and back out, like this. This isn't a very good curvy part, but... <clears throat> such that at every odd half pi, at every odd half pi, <clears throat> there's going to be an asymptote. So at pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, there's going to be another asymptote. What is the curve going to look like? And then it repeats <clears throat> another half a pi, <clears throat> I mean another whole pi, then a pi away from that, it's going to have another asymptote. So the tangent is a little different. So then let's go back to this question. When at what radians does the tan equal negative one? Well, it equals somewhere here. What what would this what would this be in terms of radians? Say that? Three pi. Three pi over four, yes. Because what happens? It's always at one at a fourth of a pi. So this would be a half and another fourth gives me three fourths. So the tangent is negative one. T has to be three pi over four plus and minus, not two pi, but one pi. So it'll be negative one at three fourths pi plus and minus the value of pi. So that the distance between here and here is one whole pi, not two pi. Okay, so that's, that's an important thing to distinguish between the cosine sine and the pi graph. The cosine sine's period is 2 pi, <clears throat> such that it's going to repeat that ratio every 2 pi. Not so the, the tangent. Yes? Um, when you go negative, further negative, is it the same? It doesn't flip or anything? It's the same it doesn't flip. Right? It always, okay. like, here, down. It's the same. Here, down. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now... Let's talk about range and domain, all right? Now for the sign, domain deals with what value? X or Y? You know, there's that old song, home, home on the range. It's really the domain. <laughs> <clears throat> Huh? Nice. Domain is X, range is Y. y. Okay. <clears throat> what is the domain of the sine and the cosine? It's the same. <clears throat> What's the domain? Y. 
negative infinity to positive infinity. There's never a break, right? So the, the domain for the sine and the cosine is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, what is the range for the sine and the cosine? Right, one, negative one to one. And remember you would write it with brackets because it includes it, negative one to one because its amplitude is one. Now that's unless we transform it, right? Because we're gonna be transforming them. All right, now let's talk about the tangent curve. What is the domain of the tangent curve. It will be different because we have these asymptotes where the tangent is undefined. So it is all reals except every odd half pi. So that would be the exception. The domain for the tangent would be all reals except every odd half pi. Now what's the range of the tangent? Yes, negative infinity, positive infinity. It would cover every y value. Thus, the ratio for the tangent can be greater than one and less than negative one. The ratio for the sine and cosine will never be greater than one. It will never be less than negative one. 